Okay, uh, so we're, we're up and running and welcome everybody. Um, before we get started, uh, we just want to acknowledge uh, that we're, although we're not, we're here virtually, um, we are uh, conducting this on the traditional territories that include Kaplam and Seal people. Um, and we'd like to welcome everybody tonight to our next virtual career spotlight. Um, we have Nicole Schulte and Tara Sopel, who are both uh, nurses, and they're going to tell us a lot about that tonight, um, which I guess we'll just start right away. And um, uh, for both of you, uh, feel free, um, whoever wants to answer first, but can you tell us a little bit about uh, your current profession? Tara told me she would default to me. So <laughs> um, I, I, I feel like that's such a broad question. I don't really, um, I don't know how to answer that. So I don't know if you can, like, can you give me more specific? Sure. Yeah, I guess um, we'll, we'll definitely come to a little bit about your pathway and some of the previous roles that you guys have had. I guess uh, we'd just like to know currently um, what your what your role is um, with um, within, you know, your scope of work now. And then we'll we'll pick away at some of the, the previous roles you guys have had, because I know that both of you have had been done a few things in the past as well. Mm -hmm. So. I've been in this role for just over a year now. I came into it just at the beginning of this pandemic and uh, it's incredible what, what it's been. Um, public health nursing is a niche uh, nursing uh, in and of itself and it's not necessarily recognized as that. Um, it's taken me a year to get orientated to the role itself. And of course that has looked very different this year because of uh, the current COVID-19 pandemic. Um, so I'm not fully up and running um, like Tara would be. Um, and so the majority of my job outside of the pandemic world is uh, we deal with families, um, children and families primarily, and uh, more in a health promotion and prevention role. Awesome. And how about you, Tara? Uh, yeah, so so like Nicole said, so we do health promos, promotion, disease prevention, and then, um, I mean, we see all ages, all different walks of life. I mean, we, we do adult clinics, we see people for outreach, harm reduction, um, postpartum, newborn, uh, I'm trying to think, uh, youth clinic, so we, we do sexual health with uh, youth, um, I'm just thinking anything else? Communicable diseases. Yeah, yes, communicable diseases. Yes, good call, Nicole. So that's huge. I mean, especially right now, we're all seeing that's taking the forefront. Um, but so that's what's really cool about what we do. We kind of dabble in all different things all at once sort of throughout our week. Awesome. And um, just kind of jumping, I know we sent you a list of questions, but I just want to jump to, I think, a good next question for you guys is, uh, could each of you just tell us a little bit about your, uh, your pathway to kind of get to where you are right now? Uh, you know, right from coming out of high school, uh, work, education, um, some of the experiences that you've had along the way. You want me to go, Nicole? Sure. Um, so mine is a lot shorter than Nicole's. Nicole has quite an interesting and exciting history. Um, I pretty much, once I decided to be a nurse, my main goal in nursing and going to school to be a nurse was always actually to become a public health nurse. So I accomplished that and that's what I do. Um, I went to school in, at TRU in 2008 eight and graded in 2012 and then I started straight out of um, school I started to work casual in Kamloops at public health there and then in 2013 I moved to Merritt and I've been working here ever since in public health and then throughout that time since I graduated I have um worked briefly doing casual work um, in home and community care and also in uh, long-term care more recently. I started like two years ago maybe um, doing long-term care casually in Merritt as well at Gillis House which is also really neat um, but I my passion is public health. 
did I answer that question or did I miss something? No, oh, that was perfect. Thank you. So I like Tara says, I've been a nurse for a little bit longer. I'm a lot older than Tara. Um, uh, I, I started off actually, I graduated high school in Alberta, just outside of Edmonton in a small community. Um, I, uh, I went on, I actually didn't really know what I wanted to do after high school. So um, there was an opportunity for me to take the LPN program, which at that time was only 13 months. So it was kind of an easy way for me to get into the workforce. Um, and really kind of get a feel for whether or not nursing was for me. Um, and so upon graduation, I actually ended up with a work uh, kind of sponsored specialty program and became um, a hemodialysis trained nurse, which was super cool. Um, and very shortly after I decided I wanted to continue my education. So I obtained my registered nursing certification at the Grant McEwen University in 2005 and then as soon as I was done that, actually, I always, my, my, my choice, my pathway, my kind of desire was always to work in emergency or intensive care. Um, and so as soon as I graduated, I actually got into another uh, paid uh, training program through the, between the University of Alberta and Mount Royal College um, as a critical care nurse. So I, I, I then continued on as a critical care and emergency room nurse in large and small center in Alberta. Um, and I actually maintained my nephrology certification. So the two, the three really went well together. Um, and then I, I, I get bored kind of easily sometimes. So I ended up doing a, a, the operating room certification as well. Um, and so I was able to combine a lot of that because working in a small community really have to have it's what is it? What do they say? You're the jack of all trades and expert in none, um, and that's really is the case. Um, so, and then as we moved more further west, we went to Hinton for a little while. I worked as an OR nurse. I continued on with some of those other specialties. Moved over to Prince George. Was able to continue in ICU and emerged there. Um, and at that point, I had had my children, and I was looking for a bit of a shift. I didn't really want that that the, the chaos of the ICU and emergency. So I completed a master's certification in project management, um, was able to take a job as a clinical coordinator in an office that uh, supplies third party staffing to uh, remote indigenous small communities uh, all throughout Canada actually. Um, and then when we moved to Merit, I actually worked in the Merit emergency department for a few shifts under as a third party nurse. Um, and so then when I came to the community, worked in the emergency department, I really decided then that I, I needed something different. So I moved into home care, home and community care here. And then, um, and then as a diabetes certified diabetes educator. So that was another paid uh, certification through my employer. Um, and then a couple of years, three years after that, I decided that uh, there was an opportunity for me in public health. And so this is where I am. Wow, that's really, really interesting <laughs> listening to both of your paths. Um, it certainly shows that with nursing, there's a lot of diverse options available. And I'm going to go a little bit off script here. And I'm just wondering if you can tell us maybe a little bit um, some of the differences between like acute care nursing and um, what public health nurses do, just so that people that are maybe considering the field, they can find something that would maybe match their personality a bit better. What's a really good question? Because <laughs> I always say, it, like, truly, there are different personalities that are attracted to all different kinds of nursing. There's psychiatric nursing, and that's a whole other area, uh, really does attract its own, you know, s type of personality. Um, emergency and ICU, and then there's clinic clinics like, uh, like the nephrology or dialysis based. There's the home and community care, uh, which is more um, community based you're outside of the hospital but you're sometimes going into people's homes so that can be daunting in and of itself um, a lot of times you're working a lot more independently whereas when you're in a hospital or in acute care you're actually working within a team we're mm -hmm. lucky here in public health we've got a really good team of nurses um, you could be in Kamloops where there's a team of 20 nurses on at any given time our community in Merritt here we have three nurses on most days um, or like Lillouette has one nurse in public health. So um, there's that. Um, I'm trying to think of... I feel like... Oh, sorry, go ahead, Tara. Well, I was just gonna say, I mean, 
all nurses do a ton of educating with their clients, like a, a lot of health education. I think it's different in public health that, I mean, a huge part of what we do is some form of health education. Um, but it just looks different because it's, I think when, when you're an acute nurse, you're sort of, um, you're looking at treating a specific condition that's going on and you have specific like pathways or algorithms that you're using to guide your care. And it's under the direction of a doctor usually, um, is sort of what I think of. And, and when we work in public health and we do that, everything we do is sort of, um, it just looks different because it's from a different lens and mm -hmm. we don't have a doctor working closely with us. So everything that's guiding our care is sort of just looks different mm -hmm. and we're very autonomous and it's a lot of just leadership here and like good communication skills. And it's not quite, I feel like there's more leadership in public health. Yeah. And it's a lot like uh, being a teacher, you're, you're educating people, you're, you know, teaching them how to look after their babies and and things that they should be doing to take care of themselves better and whereas in acute care you're you're dealing with situations a lot of the time like people are mm -hmm. sick, right and so um I, my mom's a, a retired nurse and what she found from going from acute to uh public health was that it's sort of a, a more positive kind of environment yes however if you're a real adrenaline junkie and you you just love that um, being there to sort of help somebody out in a in a dire situation maybe working in the hospital in the emergency room is where you want to be yeah it, it's so true because we all like all nurses use critical thinking skills it's just um it's just in a different situation where it may not be life or death yes that's right there, there is something incredible so just to speak to that, there's a piece of that that I, sometimes I miss that, you know, and I, and I do feel like when you're helping people at their worst, it is an incredible place to be. Mm -hmm. Very, uh, I guess it's really, you really feel um, like you're doing something meaningful, right? It's really yeah. gratifying. Yes. Yeah. Mm, I can see that. Okay. I'm going to kind of jump around here. Dave's going to get frustrated because he's going to have to figure out where I went. But um, just wondering if you can tell me, because it's sort of related to what we've been talking about. Nicole, can you tell me what you like the most about um, about nursing and maybe some of the things you like the least? I think I've thought about this for a little while. And the two things that come up right away, the thing I love the most about nursing is that there's never a place to get bored. Like I said, I have a tendency to be this person that really wants to do lots of different things. And uh, I... I truly have yet to get bored and I like all the things that I've talked about and I have ha been fortunate enough to do a lot in my 17 or 18 years of being a nurse there's so much more I could do so mm -hmm. I feel as though that I'll never get bored um I think that this pandemic has really brought to light that what's so amazing being a part of it is that um this is this is one of those things that will go down in history. Like being a part of delivering the first COVID-19 vaccine to people is mm -hmm. monumental, you know? Mm -hmm. well, so that's something, it's a real good, like, you know, check that one off the box kind of thing. Um, the thing I like the least is the politics. <laughs> yeah, I can see how that would be a bit of a deterrent. How about you, Tara? <laughs> uh, well, the thing I probably would like the least, but I don't do it, so that's why I like it the least, um, <laughs> is shift work. And that is why I mm -hmm. don't do shift work. <laughs> yeah. um, it takes special people to be able to do shift work, for sure. Um, I, I knew I didn't have it in me. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about shift work, Tara? Just your experience, like explain. Uh, like, what it was brief. My experience with shift work was pretty brief. Um, I, in nursing school, we have to do different rotations in different areas. And I did um, a rotation in merit at, in the emergency. And actually it was as an employed student nurse in my, after my third year. And so it was over the summer and it probably didn't help that I was also pregnant and I was doing shift work and I was so anxious and nervous about like sleeping in for my shift or like what was going to come up during the shift because it was all very new and you're a student and you're nervous and excited and 
Um, so I wasn't sleeping, I was pregnant, and then I'd go to work and I'd be exhausted. And then they'd tell me to take a nap on my break. And next thing you know, I was like out cold. And then I'd wake up and you're terrified. You think that everyone's flatlining in the emergency and you're running around checking people. And anyway, so I knew right there, I was like, this is not for me. <laughs> I, and nurses and nurses work long shifts, aren't they usually 12 yeah. hour shifts? Yeah, so I always joke and say I'm happy to do a 12-hour day shift in public health, but night shift is not my jam. <laughs> and how about what you like the most about your job? Uh, I really, really like the uh, autonomy that I have within my specific role that I do. I feel really lucky, and I know from working in Kamloops briefly compared to working in Merritt, which is more rural, we're more of a generalist PHN, they call it, versus us, like we have in, in bigger cities like Kamloops or Kelowna, the public health nurses have specific areas that they practice in. Um, whereas when you work rural, you have to be able to just cover all different pieces of public health. So I like that. And then also we don't have any managers on site. So we answer our own questions and do our own problem solving. And it's really fun for the most part, making our own schedules and all that. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Um, so I know we, we kind of, we've been hitting on these um, a little bit already, but I wanted to circle back and uh, just ask you guys um, a little bit about like, and maybe Nicole, you could take the acute side and Tara take the, um, like the PHN side. What would some of the just kind of general duties be required of, of someone that is on, on either side of the, that nursing spectrum? Mm, well, if I think of what it's like to work acute care, it's been a few years, but you know, you'd come on shift, you're going to relieve your uh, the people that are before you, um, because of course a hospital is staffed 24 hours a day, seven days a week, unlike a clinic. Um, so you would take your morning report, you'd get your assignment for the day, um, and then whatever that looks like. So, you know, you might have, depending on where you're working, um, an acute care ward, like the, in the hospital here, you might have, have seven or eight patients to care for in a day. Um, in an intensive care unit, we were hopefully usually one-to-one. -one. Uh, usually that person was quite ill. Um, and so you'd get your assignment, you would determine what your kind of, you, you would kind of triage it for lack of a better way of saying. Um, and so you would determine what those needs, what your needs were for the day, what tasks you'd have to achieve uh, based on physician's orders, whatever the patient might need. Um, you know, perhaps you're looking at transferring to higher level of care, or maybe they just need regular medications that have to be administered. Uh, maybe you're looking at discharging them home with services. So you have to coordinate that. Um, and then, uh, and of course, keeping really good notes, uh, liaising really well with the physician and whatever other other people you're working with. So there's physiotherapists, nutritionists, or sorry, Jill, but not like that, dietitians, registered dietitians, mm -hmm. um, uh, occupational therapists. Uh, there might be mental health clinicians, uh, other specialist physician, um, those kinds of things. And, uh, and, and just making sure that you leave your work um, good for the next person that's coming on shift um, and keeping really good notes and communicating with those people too. Hey, Tara, can you tell us a bit about the, um, the public side? Uh, so, sorry, okay, so like sort of what it looks like oh. at home. <laughs> a week like as a week sort of what it would look like um yeah just sort of the duties um like what, what your day-to-day -day as a public health nurse looks like so it it's very different all the time it's always changing um but basically at the beginning of the week we sit down as a team and we kind of all talk about what's on our workload for everyone and it's an opportunity to see what's going on and if someone needs help with something in an area right because everyone's workload is different all the time um, and then the, that workload can, each week it changes. So we have a rotation that we do and we rotate through um, child health clinics. So those are the immunization clinics that we do for babies and adult clinics, which is immunizations for uh, adults, as well as like TB skin tests. And um, we also have our youth clinic that is scheduled throughout the week. And we 
alternate nurses throughout all of these um, areas. And so depending on that, that's how that looks. And then throughout the week, we also will get uh, new babies and moms that are discharged from hospital. And we never know when it's coming. So it's just, we get assigned those uh, whenever they come and that just adds to our workload and then we also have what's called intake and so whenever anyone calls public health um, throughout the day they will get sent through to the intake nurse so then depending who's on intake you will be answering all those phone calls and doing any kind of follow-up for any issues that come through so um, sometimes it's you know questions about COVID and when they can get their vaccine and then other times it's you know breastfeeding questions and people need help with breastfeeding um, we, we just do so many different things throughout the week or we'll have people drop in for help with breastfeeding. Um, we, we do harm reduction outreach work. So we do have supplies here for um, high risk clients to come and get harm reduction supplies. And we do naloxone uh, kits and uh, we have TB clients that we take on to our workload as well. So anyone that's got a positive skin test and, or a positive um, needing treatment, whether it's active or latent therapy. Um, yeah. And then actually a while back when we first started, um, doing COVID screening or testing, we actually started that in merit and then, uh, home health took it over. So we were also rotating through the clinics there and doing swabbing. And then now we're hitting the ground running with the COVID vaccines. And then we do like flu. So during flu season, we'll be also incorporating flu clinics weekly into our workload. Um, other things, yeah, it's just like, we do so many different things all the time. It's impossible for me to get bored. <laughs> no, that uh, definitely sounds like it. Um, uh, how about um, just a, maybe a memorable experience um, from your career so far, something that really, really sticks out for you? I think it's the same as what Nicole said. I think that this really, really exciting time, I mean, it sounds really bad to say that, but um, it's quite exciting to be a part of a worldwide pandemic like this, where we are right in the, like on the ground working and getting these vaccines out. I just think that's really, really neat. Yeah, it definitely is unprecedented. Mm -hmm. Nicole, and, and I know you kind of mentioned this already, Nicole, but any other uh, experiences that really stick out for you? Yeah, I mean, I've had a lot. I could talk lots about them. But one, I was thinking about this while I was getting ready for this. I took care of a guy. I was in Prince George ICU still, so it was kind of in the last little bits of me working in ICU. And I... Um, I had been on some modified hours because I was pregnant. Um, so I wasn't working my 12 hour day night rotation. I was doing eight hour days. So I was able to work several days in a row. I remember admitting a 50 year old gentleman, 49 actually, who'd had um, a cardiac arrest and he came in clinically dead. And 10 days later, he walked out of that unit and I cared for him the entire time. Like it's, that to me is, phenomenal when I think mm -hmm. when I think about something like that it's just amazing and that's only one of like that's happened lots right but um yeah just to be able to put it in perspective how fragile life is and to be a part of all of that from from one spectrum one extreme to the other it's it's amazing very cool yeah I was just gonna say this is sort of off topic but I was just thinking another thing that's really cool about nursing is that when you go to um, school for getting your, you know, your Bachelor of Science in nursing, you get to do so many different experiences along the way. They really, really, really work hard to give you a taste and an opportunity to um, sort of see what a lot of different areas of nursing are like. Like, I, even though I've only worked mainly in public health, I, I think of all the different areas that I got to experience, like they give you, you know, 12 week practicums in all these different areas. Like I saw a baby be delivered. I saw all these different things and they're, it was amazing. Like the experiences and the opportunities that you get in nursing to nursing school to get to have an, it's, it gives you a great idea of what you might be passionate about when you enter nursing and you're not really sure because not everyone goes into it like me. Oh yeah, I'm going to be a public health nurse. Um, it's really cool. 
That's great. Yeah, I think it's great that people are given the, the opportunity to try out different things because then you get a better sense of which direction you can head mm -hmm. and, um, and sort of try to figure out where you want to focus your, your energies. So speaking of which, just wondering if um, either of you can give us an idea of some of the other um, options there are out there for nurses. So, you know, you could be a public health nurse. Um, what other options are out if you're, if you're in your nursing degree? I mean, Nicole listed off, I think, 20 different careers she's had within nursing <laughs> in her in her uh, nursing career, which is amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like the opportunities are endless to in nursing. You can almost do anything and you can even continue on and be a nurse practitioner. Like there's so many different mm -hmm. things you can do with a nursing degree. Yeah, was, that's for sure. I was just going to say even things that we don't even think about, like um, I've known nurses who, you know, they get into nursing and they realize that they're not very good at people skills. And so <laughs> they, they tend to go into research or into, um, you know, IT systems where they're building the documentation systems that we use day to day. Uh, they require nurses to do that. Um, mm -hmm. there, there really are like these really are endless and thinking outside the box, you know, mm -hmm. there's, there's like in, sorry, I was just thinking of a couple other ones that we didn't mention. Like there's infection control nurse. There's um, like, we have contact tracing nurses that are just specifically doing contact tracing right now for COVID. Um, there's the, they have nurses that are specifically just for communicable diseases that work out of the um, communicable disease unit in Vernon. Um, mm -hmm. There's, so many different there's tb nurses um i mean i guess i'm still creating a, such a small world that's sort of related to public health but just even branching off like there's immunization specific nurses that write the manuals and work on all the policies and create that in the background for us Mm -hmm. There, there really are so many different, um, like I was amazed when my, my son's type one diabetic, when he became diabetic, that there actually was a diabetes nurse, like that was an actual mm -hmm. specialization. I didn't realize that. So you can become very specialized over the years once you've sort of figured out which direction you want to head. And um, even that, just, just to give you another example, so a diabetes nurse, certified diabetes nurse, um, that's one thing, but if you want to, uh, um, work with people who have um, juvenile diabetics who have pumps, that's a whole other subspecialty. So there's yeah. like pump mm -hmm. training. Yeah, it's really a career where you can continue to take um, ongoing training to become more and more specialized as you go and change directions if you feel the need. So there's just so many opportunities out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you tell us a little bit about some of the other professions that you work closely with? So I kind of mentioned a few of them before. We've got um, registered dietitians, um, <laughs> and they're everywhere. Like they're in outpatient departments. Um, when I worked in ICU, we actually had an entire team of people that, and we would round on our patients every day. And so that team included uh, the physician, probably a medical student, uh, and perhaps even a third year. Um, you know, you'd have a medical resident and then maybe a medical student who's clerking. Um, and then you would have a registered dietitian who was there to speak to the nutrition component. You would have a pharmacist on site um, because of course there's so many medications there. Um, you would have occupational therapy, physiotherapy. Um, what else? I mean, of course, there's the different types of actual hands-on nursing. So there's like registered care aides, there's licensed practical nurses, uh, registered nurses. Um, there are registered psychiatric nurses. Nicole um, or, or Tara, could you just tell us maybe a little bit of the difference between those levels of nursing that you mentioned, like from the healthcare aid? up to RN. And then of course, you know, you've, you've mentioned some of those subspecialties as well, uh, but between HCA, LPN and RN kind of what's, what's the difference uh, in your mind? So I would say the biggest ones to sum it up, the biggest difference is scope of practice. So meaning um, like a care aid, registered care aid or an HCA, they are able to, um, they're the ones that usually provide bedside care to people that are not maybe as acutely ill, but for example, they would go out into a home and do home support for people that require daily care. Um, 
I'm not sure the length of program or anything like that. The education is is uh, less for a registered care aide than it is for an LPN. Uh, a licensed practical nurse has an increased scope of practice from an RCA, but less than a registered nurse. Um, and often uh, they can work independently, but they have to still be under the, the guidance of a registered nurse. So a registered nurse is able to delegate tasks to an LPN. Um, in a facility such as a long-term care facility, they are often the ones that are kind of really running the show. They're the ones that are giving medications, um, overseeing kind of the carry part of things. Uh, and then and then there might be a registered nurse on site for maybe three different wings of a long-term care facility that each wing has an LPN and three carry aids. Uh, just to give you an example of kind of the hierarchy of how that works. Yeah. Um, a registered nurse obviously has her scope of practice, his or her scope of practice. Uh, there are then over and above that you can become a registered nurse with certified practice. And I believe that that's what Tara has actually with the fact that she's got the STI training. Um, uh, that, require, that, that requires additional education. It's, it's reviewed by our college or our professional body um, and recognized that way. Uh, but basically it allows Tara just an increased scope over what I'm able to do uh, that does not require a physician's order. And then above that is the nurse practitioner route. And so they have an increased scope over the RNC. Um, and then finally there's the physicians. Mm -hmm. That's really great, Nicole. That, that really helps to sum it up. And in terms of um, the length of education, just to give students an idea, the healthcare assistant program at NVIT is an eight-month program. I think that's pretty standard. I forget the number of weeks it adds up to. Um, and then the the uh, LPN program, ours is an access program. So it's not, it basically you have to be an HCA to get into it. So you can't go directly into it, but a regular PN program um, is a two year diploma. So it's a two year program and the RN would be, I believe four years. We don't have that at NVIT. Is that correct, Nicole? That's, yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. um, Build, kind of building on that um, with, with nursing, um, where, where do you guys see your profession headed in the future? Are, are you guys in for big changes in what you do or, or how you do your work? Or do you think it's going to stay kind of relatively the same for a while? I really hope that we're in for some big changes. I think it's been a long time coming. Um, I'm not trying to sound pessimistic, but I feel as though there are a lot of barriers to that, that maybe I you know, I don't necessarily need to get into that. That's the political part of things that I um, <laughs> like to try and not worry about so much. Um, ideally, it'd be great if there were more, more autonomy in nursing. I think that there is room for that. And I think there's much of a need for that given our current physician shortage in communities. Uh, but again, th there's a fair amount of barrier to that, so. Um. Just adding to that, Nicole and I did talk about this and we sort of both agreed that um, for public health specifically, I think down the road, um, I do we do sort of see that there might be more of a primary care model um, approach at some point in time. I know that in different areas of um, Canada, they've made attempts at making that work um, and then they sometimes find it doesn't work for some reason or another and they go back to the way it was and separate it all out and then then years later they'll try it again and um, eventually I, they'll get it right. <laughs> so just uh, to build on some of the things we've already talked about if somebody's thinking about going into nursing what would you say are some key skills or interests they should have to be successful as a nurse? <laughs> you want me to go or what? Sure, Tara, you go okay. first. Uh, I just, I think good communication skills, um, leadership skills. Uh, what do my notes say? They're very messy. <laughs> um, <laughs> Those were the two that I had jotted down, but I mean, being a critic, being able to think critically or sometimes 
organization skills. It just, I guess it just depends what area you work in. Um, like if you were an ICU nurse, like Nicole could probably elaborate. She's told me before that, you know, it's a very organized place and it's a pretty tight ship that's run there. Um, I wouldn't survive a day because I'm <laughs> very disorganized. So I'll let Nicole elaborate. <laughs> I think though, like I've thought about this too. I think that being adaptable is also really important. And that's what I always say about Tara for everything <laughs> that is that she's not in like in the organization piece, she, you can throw anything at her and she just is like, okay, let's go. So, um, and I think that that's an incredibly important skill to have. I think like when I think about our current, you know, what, you know, how maybe I was at 17, 18 years old when I, once again, I mean, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I took about a year and kind of really decided. Um, I think skills that lend themselves really well to getting into healthcare. I think, I think having having some people skills is really important. I really, I really, really think having life skills, and I don't really know how to explain that or how you would obtain that. Um, but I think that those things are are second to none. I really do. Um, because like Tara's saying, you know, critical thinking skills and that kind of thing, leadership, I don't know that people naturally have that. And mm -hmm. I think that it's really hard to think of, of 17 and 18 year old students having that. Um, mm -hmm. so I think that if there's a way to get some kind of life skills and thinking about, so, you know, if a person really wants to become a registered nurse, there is a way that, you know, after your first year or second year, I can't remember what it is, you can work your summer as an HCA and get the skills to mm -hmm. and then at your third year or second year whatever it is you can work as an LPN and then after your third year you can work as an employed nursing student and I think that it's great to learn all the things you want to do as a nurse in a classroom and even in a controlled setting with an instructor and seven other students but it's nothing like whenever you're actually putting it into practice and you know as much as people say like here I am sitting in a desk uh, but I still believe that good patient handling is super important. Like for me to be able to know how to walk over to the acute care and help them give, you know, get somebody up and out of bed if they had to safely. I think that's like, you need to know those things. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say, um, I'm going to piggyback again. I totally agree with everything Nicole says. I was just thinking of myself. I really feel like I was super nervous and didn't really have a ton of confidence in myself coming out of nursing school but that was very short-lived because as soon as I moved into this role and worked rurally I had to be sure of myself and I had to like people come to you constantly and your confidence grows very very fast and you become you 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 learn those leadership skills even if you don't naturally have them like most people don't like Nicole says but Nicole you're so right you, it's good to have life skills because I feel like it really makes you relatable to your clients and or patients um, in whatever area of nursing that you work in because you are ha you're constantly building relationships with people and if you don't have anything to talk about or any common ground people can't connect mm -hmm. yeah and wouldn't you say that um I guess one of the things, this wouldn't necessarily be a skill, but an attribute. Um, somebody has to be a pretty compassionate and caring person and comfortable to be up close and personal um, with, with other people. Um, I've seen students in the past go through or, or enter our healthcare assistant program only to drop out because they didn't realize they had to actually touch people. And, and there's, I mean, it is personal care. It means mm -hmm. you're actually physically helping people eat, bathe, all the rest of that, right? And so I think that's something you have to take a close look at. It's not as glamorous as, as what you see on TV all the time. I mean, there's a bit of that, but there's other parts to nursing as well. I would say that that is very true. I felt like it was a bit um, cliche to say the empathy, you know, compassion, but you're right. Absolutely. Um, and you're right. It's not nearly as glamorous as people think it is. <laughs> Well, you see people sort of, I mean, not in public health, and public health is very upbeat in a lot of ways, but, you know, in acute care, you see people at their worst, and really, a lot of the time, they just need that caring person that's willing to listen and help them, right? And um, so I think people that have that attribute um, have a better chance of really having a successful career. Um, so just to build on that, is there anything someone in high school 
could be doing right now to help um, sort of familiarize themselves or prepare themselves for a career as a nurse? So a couple of things that I really like. One is volunteering if you can. In, um, I, and I, you know, I say that. I don't know what the rules are right now in facilities if they're allowing volunteers. Um, but, you know, something as simple as um, because it is it is very tied to it. I think that being able to volunteer in a place like the food bank so that you become familiar with what, you know, what the socio demographic is in your community, if you plan to work in that community, uh, or just even understanding that piece of it, that, that it's so layered. Uh, and when you're working with people, okay, fine. If you're working in the hospital, you know, might, you might see them post surgery, like, you know, after a back surgery, you might, <laughs> do a little bit of cleaning, change a dress and give them some pain meds and say, okay, see you later. Uh, but you don't know what that person's background is and, and what their whole story looks like and, and how that might influence their journey through that system. So I think that if you can, you know, take an opportunity to volunteer in your local community and in some of these other areas that we don't think about, um, you know, going into long-term care facilities or assisted living, or even in the hospital, they have uh, coffee carts or whatever it is. If you can find time to volunteer one day a week for that or an hour a week, it gives you an idea of familiarizing yourself with what that looks like. Um, and then the other thing I often, and I did this myself, if there's a way that you can job shadow somebody for a day before you make your decision, you know, or as you're trying to decide, that's another fantastic uh, thing to do. Great, great advice. Do you have anything to add to that, Tara? Uh, no, I, I agree. The job shadowing, if you're able to do that, as well as the volunteer work, that was actually, my memory's not great, but I believe that was part of the requirements of um, my application into nursing was volunteer work in a healthcare related uh, field area. And I remember doing that when I lived in Chilliwack, I did a bunch of hours of volunteer work doing what Nicole was um, mentioning. Like, I believe I, you know, handed out snacks and coffee and drinks and things like that and spent time just sort of visiting with the seniors in the seniors home that I was going to. Great. Oh, I know. And I was going to say that if you're not really sure if you want to be a nurse, you could, but you're kind of interested in healthcare or the healthcare field, there's a lot of other jobs within that that you could even start there. And it would give you a bit of a taste of what that might look like from the background, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that actually really did a good job of answering my next question, which was, <laughs> um, you know, how, what, where do you go in terms of exploring? Uh, but I think you guys uh, answered that that perfectly. Um, and I know it's certainly challenging in this time to to do that, like the job shadowing. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I did have a bit of a side question here for you guys. Um, is I get the sense sometimes that that nursing, particularly RN, is is really competitive um, in terms of access to the programs, like mm -hmm. the program. Do you find that still to be the case? And or has that changed? I don't actually know what it is right now, but I would suspect it would be the same, which is, it was like that when I entered. Um, and I think that that's mainly be given how many people can be accepted into the program and how many schools there are that actually have that program. It's sort of like, kind of, I mean, we have like a, I remember back in the day, there was like a pharmacist shortage and it was purely due to the fact that there was like a lack of numbers coming out of school because there weren't enough spots. Yeah, I, I agree. I don't, um, I'm not a hundred, I don't know. I don't keep up with what the requirements are for the university now, uh, because like I say, I graduated quite a while ago. Um, I think how that has influenced things now, though, is my concern, and again, without actually knowing what the requirements are to enter into the programs, we've had a few students through here, um, and my concern always is I, I wonder if there's so much precedent put on academics and not enough on the other pieces that mm. I think are really important. For mm -hmm. um, and I, you see that, we see, I see that when I, you know, when, when when having a student around, it's great to be academic. It's fantastic. But 
there's no match for people's skills in this job. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Nicole, and listening I, skills too. <laughs> yes. Abs yeah, absolutely. And Nicole, I was, I was just going to um, ask you another uh, sort of side question here. Um, just around the the laddering, because I know what you mentioned earlier, um, for somebody that that might not get right into an RN program, there are different ways to access nursing. And um, just if, if you could kind of just speak to that really quickly. Yeah, so I'm not 100% sure again with what's available now. I do believe that the program that I took is no longer existing. Um, it was through the Northwest College in Edmonton. Um, so I did an LPN program there. And then the uh, there it was called the Access to Registered Nursing Program. Um, and it was uh, through Grant McEwen. It was college at the time. So in actuality, I don't have a degree as a registered nurse. I was one of the final years to enter into practice with a diploma as a registered nurse. Um, uh, now it's required across Canada, every province, um, nurses have to have a degree to obtain a, a license. Um, so at the time it was a, I want to say it was a two and a half year program that I was able to do, uh, to become a registered nurse. And then, I mean, my job opportunities are virtually the same as that, uh, as a bachelor's prepared nurse. Um, now, I do know of some staff around here, actually, who are LPNs, have had LPN licensure and worked for about 10 years. And from what I understand, there's a program uh, in Alberta called, it's through Athabasca University that offers a distance mm -hmm. learning program that allows them to obtain their, their uh, baccalaureate as a registered nurse. I think that there may be another program at the University of Victoria, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, yeah. I Sorry, go ahead, Tara. No, I was just going to I was going to say that and Nicole uh, did and I was going to say we actually even have a nursing student that is likely going to be joining us um, part of as part of our team in like May or something like that, um, who's doing their final practicum with us for their laddering from LPN to RN and they're doing it through distance through a school such as Athabasca. I think it is through Athabasca actually. Yeah, so it's definitely still an opportunity that's there, and I, I would imagine that it's going to continue to be available to some degree through distance. Excellent. Yeah, I know, um, and, the, and the reason I ask is just that, and obviously NVIT here in our own community offers the last mm. program with the HCA to LPN, and then interestingly enough, as you guys have mentioned, then you could even ladder from there into the RN, um, mm. which just... <laughs> I think you get that chance to work along the way too uh, and find out what you like and don't like. And it seems like a really good path. So I, I want mm -hmm. to get your thoughts on it. Um, just as we uh, finish up here, guys, any last uh, pieces of advice, general advice that you have for young people as they're considering their possible career choices? Uh, I think Nicole and I sort of agreed with this as well that um, in the most delicate way possible to say that it's not the end of the world if you're, you know, 16, 17, 18, and you're not exactly sure what you're going to do because there are just so many different opportunities. And like, if you think that you want to do healthcare, but like we were saying, you're not really sure you can sort of start with care aid and then just kind of go from there and life skills right so there and and there's always an opportunity to upgrade because i didn't mention that but um i didn't actually go straight into nursing from graduating myself i did some general studies and i upgraded some of grade 11 and 12 courses which i would also say those are probably really important too in a sense um when you're given those opportunities to take the easy math or the hard math i suggest if you can push yourself try and take the hard math um because it sucks to have to do extra math but um if that's the way it is that's the way it is you can always upgrade um i did both <laughs> both end or all and uh then i ended up in nursing and i yeah i agree with tara you know in the nicest way to say that um because i think it's it makes a difference when you actually know what you want to do and you actually start to care about what you're doing um, if you don't feel like you're understanding, you know, why, why you're working so hard in a class that you're really struggling with, it's really hard to get the marks that are required sometimes. So I think 
you know, I think our youth now, I, I'm always worried that people put too much pressure on themselves and, and maybe there's external pressure or whatever. So I think it's okay to like really take your time, think about it. There's lots of opportunities. Um, I think they say nowadays people change their career over seven times in their, in the course of their career. So um, healthcare is, if you're going to do it, healthcare is a place to be because Tara says I'm on 20. So <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Well, and yeah, it speaks to all the opportunities, which I, I think is awesome and yeah. great for our both people, you know, our attendants tonight and then those later that are going to watch this to just get a sense of everything that's out there. And yeah, mm -hmm. you can't have 20 healthcare degrees, it, it looks like, or health, sorry, healthcare careers and all in kind of the same thing, which is, is really um, any, I just want to open up for some questions. Um, if we have a, uh, from the audience, if anyone um, either wants to unmute and, and ask or even drop a question in the chat, I uh, would love to hear from you. Hi. I don't really have any questions right as of right now, at least. I just wanted to say thank you guys, and I enjoyed listening to your guys's experiences and everything that you have seen and done it was really informative for me and I enjoyed it so thank you you're welcome I'm glad you enjoyed it yeah that's awesome hi there uh Rob here calling you from down under actually uh, <laughs> but uh quick one um can you maybe sh share some of your thoughts on uh your position as it pertains to folks in, in aboriginal or indigenous communities Through, yeah. go ahead. Oh, I thought someone else was talking. Um, so in nursing specific? Uh, yes, nursing specific. Um, what, what's, uh, you know, are there nurses on in Aboriginal communities or what, what's, uh, you know, uh, anything that you might want to share with uh, folks from the, you know, what you do and, and your understanding of that? Right, actually, that's a really good question because, um, it's really actually kind of cool because um, a lot of the Aboriginal communities um, everywhere, I believe, but for sure around here, um, they have their own nurse that is similar to what I, I am, like a public health nurse or a home and community care nurse. They they hire their own specifically under their their health authority. Um, I think it's, I'm, I'm not super knowledgeable. I think Nicole would have more understanding because I, I think she might've even worked for one, um, but so there's opportunities to work just like I do, but for a First Nations health authority or, or as like a band nurse. Um, and we, that's actually a, um, someone we didn't mention along with many of the other professions that we, we work with all the time. So I actually do talk to a lot, um, the band nurses in our community and we talk back and forth because we do share clients and things like that. When I held my position as the diabetes educator here, it was actually a shared funding um, agreement between the in Interior Health Authority and First Nations Health Authority. So one day a week, my position was funded to deliver service to the Ankle Cup Nation um, down towards, uh, I think as far as Kanakabar was the furthest reserve. Um, and so, yeah, I think that, that there's a lot of, potential. Um, um, I think that there would be potentially more opportunity if there were more shared funding partnerships. Um, there seem to be some barriers with that. Um, but I do know that recently our our local like Schwakam Community Health Services Society has created a, an overarching health services society. And I do believe that they're hiring staff of all types. Um, they have a few LPNs. I think they've got a registered nurse. They do have a registered nurse who does a public health component, I think. Um, I'm not too sure what that looks like right now, but. Yeah, because like even just thinking specifically of my role and my job, like with this um, pandemic that we're going through, I know that like, so we're, we're doing COVID-19 vaccination, but so are the um, the First Nations uh, health authorities and they're doing their own um, members on the reservation and things like that. 
And um, I even had mentioned that I would be open to helping and if they needed extra people. And so that's something that like at any point in time, we could lend to help one another and work together and collaborate. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, and Rob, thank you. That was a great question as well. Uh, and all, uh, Je Jennifer, anything uh, to add before we say goodnight? Uh, I don't know. Just, um, just speaking um, as someone that had a father that was in um, in in the hospital and in um, long term care for a while before he passed away. Um, the one thing that really I really noticed between someone that was an excellent nurse and someone that was maybe an average nurse in acute care would be their ability to listen. Um, so I, I just wanna leave that with people that are thinking about nursing. Um, you have to, like they say, have good people skills and be able to listen to what people are going through, whether it be the patient or the family, because you're really the glue that sort of binds everything together and makes it work as a nurse. I mean, doctors tend to get a lot of the glory, but the nurses really hold everything together. Yeah, I agree. You guys are the, the unsung heroes for sure. And <laughs> the, really the entire healthcare system, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. Someone that I just recently myself um, came off of uh, a, a back surgery. And I mean, the, the amount of face time I got with my physician was so minimal and really the people that, you know, I was leaning on for advice and uh, even just, you know, asking those questions and seeking a bit of comfort were, were my nurses and they were, they were all really great and uh, made my experience um, a lot different than it could have been. So I, I was really grateful for them too. Um, any, any last words, um, Tara or uh, Nicole, before we say goodnight? Uh I don't know. I think we covered so much. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Agreed. I think the one thing that I, I always tell people, I really do love telling people about the world of nursing uh, because I just think there's so many opportunities for people. And so I'm always, you know, I, I really do push the, the idea that if, if you're considering this as a healthcare or as a career, um, I know that myself, I'm always more than open to having conversations with people one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I would imagine there's an awful lot of people that would also say the same thing, so. Excellent, and um, if, if a student's watching this and is interested in maybe having a conversation with one or both of you guys, um, they can maybe get in touch with me and then I'll make that connection and- mm -hmm. Good idea. Yep. Perfect, okay. Awesome. Well, again, um, a big thank you to, to everybody who was here tonight. And um, Tara, Nicole, thank you so much for doing this. We really, really appreciate it. Thanks for having us. You bet. Okay. Thanks. Good night, everybody. See ya.